Hello, today we'd like to talk to you about uh, a new device from Balif called Plunger Prox. In the past we've used a lot of mechanical actuators like this detent holder where a target hits the, uh, the plunger and activates a proximity sensor or these little tube switches, the same concept. The target waves in front of them. The problem is there are predetermined uh, distances and trigger points on these things. And in a lot of the applications that we have today, we need more flexibility with the trigger point and, act and actuation um, points on these things. So today we're going to talk about plunger procs. And before we can actually get into the applications, we're going to give you a little bit of a background on how it works. So in the plunger procs, we have a system comprised of a housing. It's brass. It's 18 millimeters in diameter with a one millimeter thread pitch. And in the back end of the, of the housing is a sensor. And this is the key to the system. Um, when you buy this system, it comes in a kit with a sensor, a housing, a spring, a tip, which we'll talk about in a minute, and a collet. So, what's the difference in this sensor and other sensors? Well, it's not flush, meaning you can surround it and bed it in metal, and it's not non-flush, meaning it has to be raised up above the surface pretty far for it to actuate. It's quasi-flush, it has to come off the surface of metal. Um, it really has no bearing in this except that it's married to this kit. You must use these sensors with these systems, either NPN or PNP. And when you buy it, it comes as a kit designated as such. But there's a real advantage to it. They are off-the-shelf off sensors. They're standard products. But when it's installed into this sensor, what happens is when we depress the plunger, it slides over the sensor so that it makes it adjustable as far as the trigger point, the set point in this thing, and still gives us, uh, provides us with over travel so we don't damage any sensors. So the front end, whether it's a receptacle as we have here, or a, a flat tip right here, or a round tip, or a chisel tip, a pointed tip right here, the front end is all metal and the back end is hollow. So there's the key. That's very, very important to remember that. So we'll show you how this goes back together. The sensor's already installed here. The spring goes inside. And it's important to mention that this kit comes with three spring tensions. It's already preloaded with a medium tension spring. We have a light tension spring and a heavy duty spring. And we have the force value, those are value uh, available if you need them in Newton meters or dynes, whatever value you need. So the collet slides over the, the tip the tip slides into the plunger. And that's important to know too, because if we get any dye lubes or any fluids in there, it, number one, it's blown out the back end of the, of the device. And there's a breathing port right here. So that makes it breathable. Um, and if things ever get gummed up in there, you can just put cleaning solutions in there and it comes right out. So let's talk about actuation point. We have some of these pre-wired. And the way we make this work We'll back the, uh, the sensor out, and you'll hear the tester come on here in a minute. And then we back it right off. If you want a very, very light tension, light trigger, we'll just rotate it out about a, a millimeter or so. And we actuate it very, very lightly. And a lot of those applications, we need that. If you need less sensitivity, thread the sensor out a little bit more. We'll activate it further down into the travel but you still get over travel, so you're never damaging a sensor. So where do we use these things? In my hand is a flat tip in the world of sensing when we send uh, a piece of flat metal from a transfer die, a uh, transfer rail into a transfer die. We'll put these at various locations in the die so we know that the panel is properly seated before we make the next hit. In the case of the round tip that you see here, they're used very frequently as a locating pin very, very frequently. And in the plunge, in the receptacle model, we have a paddle hooked up here. In this case, it's a two inch paddle, which mimics a lot of the, uh, the feed paddles that are out there in the world of stamping. So when metal comes through the die, it activates the, uh, the sensor and it's all self-contained. Everything is nice and clean. We know that our strip made it through the die, but anything can be threaded into that receptacle, including uh, some of these new probes, we're, we're finding applications where people just want to touch something for gauging, maybe a flange, um, you know, and anything can go in there, including 
what's already available and off the shelf. These little nut adapters. So it can be set up so that a panel with welded nuts on it, you can validate that those nuts have been welded and we don't miss any, anything going out the door to our customers. It's important to note also that we have a competitive product in the market. There's a lot of these uh, uh, pre-assembled actuators, spring-loaded. Uh, they're very rudimentary and they fail pretty frequently. You can see this little attachment in the back end, that's where a ground wire goes, just as a feedstop mechanism. And people who have seen our plunger procs kind of prefer that design in most cases. Thank you.